first commandment, you shall have no other gods. This means that we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And it's the above all things that actually gives the shape to this commandment because there are other things that you're supposed to love. God, in fact, calls you to love your neighbor. There are other things you're supposed to trust. Like if you drop a pen, it will fall. Gravity, real thing there. Uh, there are other things you're supposed to be afraid of, like sharks. Sharks are scary. The thing is, we are to fear, love, and trust in God above all things. As much as we trust in gravity, we should actually trust in our salvation even more. As much as we are called to love our friends and our family, we are actually called to love God more. We are to see him as the chief gift giver, the good gift giver, the perfect and holy one who gives us good gifts because the things that he gives us and tells us to love and trust in, they are good gifts. Even the things that we are afraid of are good gifts. They are used by a good and loving God for our good. Even when sin would try and corrupt them, God would still miraculously use them for good. I'm not so sure how sharks are good, uh, but I trust my God who tells me that he only gives good gifts to me. The problem with the first commandment is that though, above all things, because I'm actually real good at loving the things of this world. I'm actually real good at trusting the things of this world. In fact, I am so good at it that I trust them more than God. I love my family more than God. I am an idolater. The word idol is what we have for when we place things above God, when we take the gift and we make it more important than the giver. And this word idol, it actually paints a picture of what happens every single time. See, you wouldn't actually call it an idol unless you also believed in God, right? you would just say the most important thing to you is your God and be done with it. An idol actually calls attention to the fact that it is never either or with us Christians. We of the faith, our, our, our chief first commandment issue is always a both and problem. See, we want God and all of the other stuff. We want to find a way to mix them together so that they, they jive and so that we don't feel the, the discord when we choose the things of this world and the people of this world ahead of the God uh, who gives them all to us. And so one of the tricks that we do to accomplish this is that we name all of our favorite idols Jesus. It's really crafty. When we name our idols, the things we fear, love, and trust in more than God, God, well, then it doesn't seem so bad because we only worship the one true God. It, it, it sounds different. So let me play it out this way. Uh, see, we make God the means to the thing that we really want. So uh, if I really trust in money more than anything else in this world, I would say the point of Jesus is to make me rich, which uh, there are churches that teach. Uh, the whole point of Jesus is to get you the thing that you really want. See, God becomes nothing more than a means to an end to your idol. Uh, the thing is, when you look at the first commandment, when you actually look at it, though, you see something miraculous. God, who knows you and the things that you fear, love, and trust in above him, still wants to be God to you. He wants to be God to you so much that he gives you these good gifts because they are actually good. And then calls you not to worship them because he knows those things can't actually save you. And more, he points you back towards what actually can. God in the first commandment actually insists on being God to you. Thank you for watching Higher Things Video Shorts. If you're looking for an easy way to support higher things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon for content notifications. You can follow Higher Things on social media and on our website, higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing, we ask that you remember us in your prayers and donations.